Hello everyone and welcome to The Phoenix Phenomenon. My name is Roxanne McCarty O'Kane. I am a ghostwriter and your host for today. Thank you for joining us for another episode where we delve into the transformative process of becoming an author and talk to the change makers who know this journey all too well. Today I am joined by Catherine Malloy, who is an international speaker and communications expert specializing in leadership, sales, and service. So thank you so much for joining us, Catherine. Thank you for having me. Excellent. So to tell you a little bit more about Catherine, she's owned and operated several highly successful training companies and has been recognized both nationally and internationally as a leader in sales and service training. As managing director of OSPAC Business Advantage, she was recently awarded an International Stevie Award in America for Sales Training and Education Leader of the Year. Catherine has developed the award-winning Conscious Connection Framework, which is a holistic roadmap that combines insights from over 25 years of studying body language, behavioral science, and neuro-linguistic programming. And it's radically transformed many teams and individuals to help them to self-lead and communicate more effectively. The reason we have Catherine with us on the show today is that she is also the author of The Million Dollar Handshake, which is doing the rounds around the world and really transforming the way that people view the way that they communicate and interact with people in their families, in their business, um, generally in their lives. So thank you so much for joining us today, Catherine. I know you're a very busy lady. Yes, and it's interesting times in COVID. Uh, I think people, I always say in business, you're busy because you're busy or you're busy because you're getting busy. And um, yes, so I, I believe everyone today is still very busy. <laughs> Absolutely. Wonderful. So I'd love for you to, we've, I've given people a bit of a rundown in your um, some of your business achievements, but I'd love to find out a bit more from you about what it was that led you into the realm of really studying and learning about how um, how we communicate and what drove that passion for you? Yeah, that's interesting. You know, it started when I was young. Um, I was adopted, you know, orphaned in Australia, adopted. And um, unfortunately, uh, my mum died when I was 16, very suddenly. And I, you know, had to grow up quickly, you know, get a job and help look after the house, etc. Uh, but what I did was I used to take these short trips away um, to, in those days, third world countries. And one of my trips was to Bali. And when I was there, I noticed that, you know, people negotiated on everything they bought. And so, you know, I wasn't an instant success. But what I did was I sat back and I started to watch. And did you know, they shake hands with everyone when they meet you. So the first thing they always do is shake hands and say, hey, you know, um, that they might say something like this. Hi, my name's Roxanne. You see it? It's on my hat. And so you, you wouldn't forget them. They're very good with customer service. And they'd shake your hand. And what I started to watch was, you know, some people negotiated well. Some people really screwed them down. And then, then the seller was upset and would even tell them to leave. And sometimes the buyer would get upset and get in tears. Anyway, I started to watch these transactions and then I started to, you know, firm up my handshake and to match that person. Some were soft, some were firm. And I started to match that and I, and I started to get really good deals. It may not have always been the best deal, but it was such a good deal that the next time I came, they would be giving me extra things, doing different things for me. So... Very quickly, I learned how to create win-wins. And then I started to study body language. And by the age of 22, I was topping sales uh, for Westpac. So we were CBA, we merged together. And I was topping sales in Queensland and then in Australia. And they're saying, what are you doing? And, you know, I said, I studied body language. So I love to, I actually really love working with people. And then I started to help people with customer service, product knowledge and customer service and went into training. I uh, had children um, and then I, I stopped work during that time and then my husband um, fell ill mm -hmm. and at the age of, you know, around 40-ish, let's just say, uh, the GFC hit and um, uh, my husband wasn't well, so we nearly lost everything and I started my training company then 
And so I chose to go back into the field of communication because I still think on this planet today, it is the number one skill that is needed. And in times of crisis, the way that we communicate to ourselves, communicate to our family, our workplaces, you know, this is really what creates mental wealth as far as I'm concerned. It's all in the way that we communicate, you know. You, you've got to imagine that brain imaging technology really does show that we react before we speak. So our body will be in a position before we've even uttered a word. And that's why husbands and wives can fight for up to two days because of the raise of an eyebrow at the wrong time. Because we keep reading these messages and making up stories for them without communicating and actually asking what's going on. And I think that's why that big movement of Are You OK came out because, you know, people will say, yes, but we really need to stop and communicate. And we need to be a global listener, not just an in-the-head listener, where we're reading the body language signals and, and, and the words at the same time and not just separating them. Absolutely. Now that's amazing. And I know um, you at a previous time that quite your work is taking you around the world and it's, it's very rare that you are actually on the Sunshine Coast. So we're very fortunate that we can have the time with you today. Um, but tell me about, yeah, how, how far and wide this, this work has taken you. Uh, well, I've worked in Saudi Arabia. And that's hard to get into, but you know, what an amazing experience. And you know, I've worked in well over 18 countries, um, lots and lots of cities throughout India, China. Um, I've been in Dubai, UK. Uh, I haven't, I have won awards in America and I've worked virtually, but I haven't worked physically yet. So, you know, um, I, I, I think the way we're going that we will we will be working more virtually now, uh, which, you know, is good for the planet as well. I don't know how good it is for us as human beings. Um, you know, we do love that connection and meeting people and, you know, that little Zoom dot. Um, I think we'll, we'll soon find that there's a thing called Zoom stress. <laughs> Absolutely. I've experienced that already. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Okay. And so I'd love to find out um, when it was that you first had the seed planted to, to write a book, to, to document this, um, this knowledge that you've been gaining over the years and to um, create another platform for yourself to becoming an author. Yeah, great. Uh, great that you asked. Well, I started my training company. Uh, you know, I, I always think there's two reasons people do things. One is through inspiration and one is through desperation. So I wanted to, you know, we lost well over a million dollars in the GFC and we had children at school and I didn't want to lose a house. Started my training company and I signed over a million dollars in our first year in training. And so then from there, I was able to grow the business vertically. We had 18, a team of 18 on the Sunshine Coast, 36 trainers around Australia. And um, as it was growing, I found that I wasn't really doing what I wanted to do. You know, I ended up managing this business instead of you know speaking with people and clients and growing people and businesses which is what i love mm -hmm. so then mm -hmm. i sold to that and i had the opportunity while i had the company to take it internationally and i started to speak on stages you know around uh, communication mindset sales customer service um enhancing your cultural awareness you know throughout china and all this knowledge, you know, I kept being told you need to write a book. And what happened was I missed a couple of um, talks that I wanted to do because they chose an author speaker. Now, just because you're an author doesn't mean you're a great speaker. Mm -hmm. And just because you're a speaker doesn't mean you can be a great author. <laughs> so um, I, I had this in my head, you know, a lot of people write books and, you know, are they great quality and who's going to want to publish my book, you know, so I think there's a bit of self-sabotage happening. And what I did was I started to create my book. I don't know if you can see on my wall behind there, I have all these stickers. So I strat I'm, I'm a big strategy person and I strategize this book, but I turned them into workshops and I started delivering workshops on body language, mindset, behaviors, 
the million dollar handshake keynote I've been delivering for a few years, you know, about the way we connect and communicate, even in those first seven seconds, you know, our first impression does really matter. So, um, anyway, I was told to write a book and I was sitting in this taxi. I was coming back um, from a TV station, Channel 9 in um, Sydney. And the taxi driver heard a phone call I just had. And he said, ma'am, ma'am, may I ask what you do? And I said, oh, I'm a trainer speaker. And he said, oh, yes, ma'am, but I think there's more. I said, sorry. He said, I, I overheard your conversation. I hope you don't mind. So I was just about to meet um, Hachette, which is a book company that had heard about my I heard about my talk and thought it would be really great having a woman, you know, um, create this book on the million dollar handshake. And he said, I think you're an author. And I said, oh, no, 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 I, you know, I'm, I'm, I haven't written a book. Yes, but ma'am, I think you're going to. And I'm very excited because I'm going to tell my wife I had an author in the car today. And I'm sitting there going, oh, okay, universe, I'm getting the message. I've been told this for two years now. So, um, so from there, I, I had the meeting and um, got the first chapter off to the publisher and the rest is really history. Um, so this is, this is the million dollar handshake. And the interesting thing is there's so much I didn't know about publishing. And, you know, as a, Ghostwriter, it would be wonderful um, to, to have someone there alongside you as well. You know, getting those ideas and, and putting them into place because, you know, it took about four years. And <laughs> I've been working about since 2017 on the other one. <laughs> it's a long, long process by yourself. <laughs> There's all these different things, see. So this book was Hash Out, which was released in Australia, New Zealand. And then before it got released, it got released internationally as well. So Orion bought it, and apparently this is very rare. Usually it'd be two or three years after Australia, you'd get released internationally. And so Seven Dials then bought the book, but they used the same cover, but it was a little bit lighter. And then um, Hachette India bought it and created a backpack version. So it's really light, but it ended up with the seven, di seven dials on it as well because seven dials in UK made it uh, business book of the year in 2018 for their seven dials. And then it was released in um, traditional Chinese in Taiwan and it's been bought by Vietnam. So um, it's in every Commonwealth country and it's just making its way around the world at the moment. So... Um, you know, it's not just obviously about a handshake, you know, it's about body language for business success, um, you know, our mindset, creating that, you know, million dollar mindset is so important, especially through, through COVID. Understanding our behaviours, I absolutely love this section um, and it's something that I've been delivering for years and years and I've got a quote, what you believe doesn't make you a better person, the way you behave does. And I think that is the key in communication. Yeah. You know, we've all heard it. Some people can, you know, speak the words, but their actions, you know, don't back it up. And I, I do think that actions do speak louder than words. And then it goes into connecting, communicating cross-culturally. Um, of course, we mentioned our positive mindset for success and um, the conscious connection framework. So this is a little tiny piece of it and this was IP we'd been working with for a long time you know our body language our mindset our behaviors to create this level playing field and um, that's what the book is all all about revolutionizing the way you connect and communicate absolutely and might I just say I get approached so many times by people who are you know that all they want is a meeting with some of these traditional publishing houses um, and they ask me, you know, what do you do? What do you do? So I, w I was going to ask what your process was, but it sounds very much like you were approached by them to, to create this book specifically. How amazing is that? Really amazing. And I had, I had already started. So sorry, I had already started. And then they, they loved the idea of a, a female doing the handshakes because I thought they might want to change the title because I wasn't wrapped with the title. 
it was the title of my keynote, but I was worried that people would think it was just about a handshake. And of course, now we're in the world without handshakes, right? <laughs> but um, I constantly see people wanting to meet and greet and still shake hands, you know. As long as you don't touch your face and you use your hand gel, it's okay. Absolutely. Amazing. Let's find out more about your writing journey. So you've, um, you've had all of the content there, all of the IP there. Um, why was it that it took you four years to, to get the, um, the book out? I, I do believe, I, well, number one, you don't know what you're doing. Number two, um, I really wanted to have a publisher publish it. And number three, I was self-sabotaging. Mm -hmm. And usually I don't, but I was probably worried. When you put a book out, it's quite a brave thing. And I didn't realize that, you know, and the moment I realized it, because courage is one of my things, I thought, no, I'll have to do it. Because people are going to judge you and say things. And luckily I've been getting amazing messages through. Um, I got one recently from a lady who did um, Anthony Robbins program yeah, and you know yeah. he's very big with NLP and, and DISC is, is part of it now, behaviours and she said when I did your behaviours now I understand it all. She said um, she didn't understand it as much during that program but once she run, read the book she goes I understand it, thank you. So you know it's great some of the messages that you're getting you know I, ha I had another lady that sealed a deal at Cole's supermarket. She hadn't got in, couldn't get in. She went in really confident, did that handshake, and then doors opened. So I think, I think what's really important if anyone is listening to this and you haven't written a book yet, is it's okay to feel nervous, it's okay to worry about all that, but you know what? Your message is more important than the way that you're going to feel about it. So, you know, it's important to get that out there. And I think, you know, Roxanne having a ghostwriter would be an absolutely amazing treat. Excellent. Thank you, Excellent. And so talking about feelings, like having put so much effort and, you know, spending so much time on it, I'm sure you were living and breathing your book um, through, through most of that period while it was being created. What was it like to, to hold that first physical copy in your hands and to, you know, have that tangible um, outcome? Yeah, it was really incredible to see it for the first time. Um, the cover that I had created, because I'm really visual, so when I started, I, I had this cover, and um, then this cover came through, and I'm just like, well, they, they know what they're doing. I don't. So, of course, we went for it. When we opened it up, it was a little bit of that, you know, teary moment. Oh, my gosh. Uh, all this knowledge over the last 20-odd years and being able to take businesses and... CEOs and managers through these processes and seeing the results can now get to everybody. And um, at the back of each chapter, we've also got online content. So if you loved body language, you want to go deeper, there's a, there's a free link you can get to and go through a course with us. Uh, same with the, each part of the chapters. And, and it's free as part of the book. So um, just seeing it all come to life was absolutely an incredible moment. I think throughout the process though, the most incredible part was number one, um, having a publisher that wanted to publish it. And then number two, receiving a letter about 10 o'clock at night um, saying, you know, we love your book. The whole team read it. The whole team is now, you know, it's easy to read, easy to implement and it works. And we want to make a business book of the year in the UK. That, that was a, another one of those moments, you know, that was huge. And then when we got the letter from Taiwan and the letter from um, Vietnam. So I think all those moments just keep adding to those little miracles of, you know, um, it's, a, it's a little part of a legacy that your children can pass, your grandchildren can pass. Hey, this is what, this is what your grandma wrote. And it doesn't date because human beings haven't changed. Our behavior styles are still the same. And look at this, even in COVID, you know, a hundred years ago, they had to stay locked up and keep their distance and wash their hands, which we should all be doing anyway. Um, and, and so with all this technology, that, that was what they educated people in, how to wash their hands. It's, it's quite amazing, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, absolutely. And so I guess it goes without saying that um, like this, this book, this creation of yours has really just catapulted your business and, and your profile to, to a whole other level. Like there's, there's, your books are literally around the world at the moment. Yes. Yeah, so, so usually uh, now, obviously, if people are wanting to create a, a better atmosphere in their offices, be able to communicate well, understand each other's strengths and um, behaviours, you know, I get booked to be able to do that and speak at conferences and, and raise people. And, you know, the most important thing for me is is giving real tools that people can take action, giving simple. I love taking something complex and making it really simple. And one of my chapters in here was a leadership chapter and a sales, but they didn't want them in because they said there are other books. And I'm like, I don't want to write another book. <laughs> Having said, as soon as this book was released, the other book just came. And I think that's um, something that you would probably find with your authors, the minute one's out, the next one is already brewing and I've been working since the end of 2017 on the conscious leader which I wanted for this decade to come out in 2020 mm -hmm. so I'm very deep in it at the moment and I'm just finishing my master's in leadership as well because I really even though I've you know won the Australian Institute of Leadership and Management and I've trained the Diploma of Leadership and Management to hundreds and hundreds of people um, you know, you, I'm always, you know, learn is one of my big things. So is, is there something that I haven't caught yet? Is there something else that I can add value with? So that was the why, why I wanted to complete my master's. Plus, I, you know, I speak and train on it all the time. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. So I guess are you finding you've got a bit of extra time to, to get your writing done now? Or is, is the demand just as high in the online world for you at the moment? Yes, I think, um, it, like I was saying before, we're all busy. We're just busy getting ready. You know, everyone's using this word pivot. And I always think of people going around in a circle pivoting, you know. So um, I think maybe we just want to pivot a little and then we then we need to once again, um, you know, get traction in that area. So we are in another global financial crisis. So whether they are saying it or not, I, you know, I said to my husband, the last thing I wanted to do was start another business. However, communication and leading ourselves well will make the difference for, for many of the businesses. And right now, yes, I'm at home, knee deep in online content. Um, working. Last night, I was in India. The night before, I was in Singapore. The night before that, I was in UK. And before that, I was in USA. So I feel like I'm just traveling the world from my seat. How good is that? It's minus the jet lag. <laughs> minus the jet lag. I've never got jet lag. It was, a, it was an amazing thing. I don't know why, um, but very, very blessed. I was obviously meant to be doing the job I was doing. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, how amazing. That's great. Perfect. And I guess um, you, you mentioned the word pivot, but has... Has the, um, the demand for the types of things that you're being asked to present on changed or are you very much using the same, um, the same content that you, you've always worked with and maybe slightly changing it for the current environment or are you finding that that's been very consistent throughout? Yeah, great question. So I guess with the first impressions, I've been doing a lot more of virtual influence, you know, helping companies and corporates um, create those team meetings and you know being able to get people to lean in and to turn up ready for meetings so virtual influence is really important and the energy level that is required um, online is even higher so people don't understand they really need to to bring the a game to that uh, zoom call zoom meeting zoom training you know after a day of training with me people go oh my gosh i feel so energized how do you keep your energy up the whole time and so your body language is hugely important so i'm still speaking around body language virtual uh, influence which is your first impressions mm -hmm. uh, i'm still speaking you know on mindsets obviously that's a really important part but i've been doing a lot more work in that conscious leadership space which is of course the next book due to come out soon absolutely so do you, do you have a release date for that or is it more of a case of watch this space oh, i wish i had a release date it's more of a case of watch this space i was hoping for october 
So it just depends how hard we work now. Um, this time, uh, because once you um, sign to a publisher, you um, or all your books have to go through. But our publisher isn't releasing nonfiction this year. Uh, well, since COVID, um, they're you, they're mainly doing fiction that will go into you know big W and can hit the shelves and keep on running because nonfiction is more a slow mover. Yeah. And um, but they said next year that they're, they're doing it. They said, however, if you want to release it this year, you can self-publish. So that started to get the cogs turning for me because, you know, I'm always asked, do you self-publish, do you publish? And I can't, I can't say it because I don't know. And because I'm such a learner, I've decided to go down the self-publishing route. And the second thing that made me want to do it is I want to get the book a little bit more accessible to everyone and make it cheaper. Mm. So, so to do that, it means that I can self-publish it and also in this book, I want to keep updating it, which means there'll be a version one and in five years time, there'll be the version two. So I just have a little bit more. I think I'll have a little bit more control over it, but I'll stay tuned. I'll let you know. Yeah, <laughs> control is the magic word with self-publishing. So I know that you will definitely have that for sure. <laughs> so. Excellent. Oh, how exciting. Yeah, there's, um, there's been several guests I've had on the show that have, they've run the full gamut. So they've done, you know, they've had the traditional publishing contract, they've had um, a self-publishing experience, and they've also had an independently, um, independent publishing experience. So yeah, it's, it's interesting that you're, you're now um, moving down that path as well. Yeah, so isn't that, isn't that interesting because you think, oh, you know, once you publish, you do want to stay published. And it was the most amazing experience, you know. They were, they were absolutely fabulous company and the books were in every airport, you know, and international airports. And, you know, it, it was amazing to see it at all the bookstores. So, you know, they really did do a fabulous, fabulous job, which would be much better job than I will be doing that way. But it just means I'll be able to get it to, um, I'm hoping, hundreds more people that are now doing our courses as well. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. And so the name of the show is, is The Phoenix Phenomenon. And I've called it that because, you know, it's very much about a process of transformation when, when people go down the, the path of becoming an author. Um, so I do, I'd like to ask you, you know, what, what was your main transformation in the process of becoming an author? Was it a personal one? Was it um, more um, clarity around your business and the direction you wanted to take your career? What, what were some of the main things that you, you encountered on your journey? Wow, interesting question. And I'm a little bit of a shocker because, you know, I guess you should stop and go, oh, wow, like, you know, I, I'm always on to the next thing in my head. <laughs> so, um, you know, and people will quite often always say, you know, you know, author goes on your title and um, she's an author. And I, I still don't um, know exactly how that has affected me. But I guess the great thing about, about it is that you become more of that expert in your field. Mm -hmm. So I guess when you do put your knowledge down, then you have, you know, written knowledge that can be uh, used as well in your university assignments. <laughs> That's a <always> bonus. <laughs> in the field. <laughs> so that, uh, that has been a bonus. Um, but apart from me, I'm exactly the same person doing the same things because it's never really about me. It's about my audience and what we can do to make a difference. So if being an author helps me get more information to them, then I think it's a great thing. Absolutely. Wonderful. And you've definitely caught the author bug by the sound of it. So that's amazing. <laughs> Excellent. That's great. So you've mentioned um, online courses a few times. So I'd love for you to, to let our viewers and listeners know a little bit more about how they can connect with yourself, get access to some of these resources, and of course, um, buy copies of the Million Dollar Handshake. Oh, fabulous. So um, if you go to www.katherinemalloy.com.au, there's information, you know, around uh, our courses, what we offer. 
and also our company site is auspac, A-U-S-P-A-C, B-A.com.au. Um, and then it has the link to our online courses, etc. But if you pick up the book, you know, any Amazon, Kindle, it's everywhere. They've got it in podcasts, etc. There's um, six online links to um, extra curriculum and online courses as well that you can jump into from the book. And, you know, if you do pick the book up, I know it will make a difference. It'll make a difference for your family and your life. But um, I hope that you get to pass it on. You know, even give it to your children. It, what what a great thing to know in the teenage years. I've had so many teenagers go. It's been phenomenal. We have one girl that was um, fairly unwell mentally. We put her through one of our programs and she's now a nurse. She's loving life. And I just showed my husband the photo because all her posts, she still thanks us for what we're doing. And he remembered when she was sitting in one of our courses and, you know, she was one of the girls that was really at a stage ready to take her life. So I think it's important that we, we take hold of who we are and we communicate the way we need to, to get the best results. Yeah. Absolutely. That's so cool. That with us. Because I mean, yeah, like you said, the title just um, it sounds very businessy, but the book is absolutely so much more than that. So holistic and it covers all these other areas that, that can just impact you, your entire life, like all the facets of life. So yeah, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful product to have out there so yeah anyone that's um really connected with um with what Catherine's been saying today and wants to find out more you know exactly where to head to to get hold of the copy and and start making those changes yourself so thank you so so much for your time today Catherine it was a pleasure to have you on it's been an absolute wonderful pleasure to be here and um I wish you every success and you know if you are out there just start <laughs> Absolutely. Wonderful. You heard it from the lady herself. <laughs> okay. Thank you.